Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Kusuri Light 3.8 litre Smart Air Fryer. And what I want to do today is to show you around the air fryer. Clearly, first of all, get it unboxed, show you around some of the features and benefits that it offers. Also, I'll be giving you a couple of demonstrations. I think really with this kind of product, you need to give it a good test. Just before we start, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just first of all, we need to get the air fryer unboxed. Can't really do a lot without getting our box first. So right in the top here, we've got the crisper plate. Uh, that's that's something that will be very useful. Take some of the polystyrene packing off. And here we go. So one air fryer. Try and be gentle with it. Don't want to damage it before I start using it. So, it's like the big reveal. There we go. So, first impression of this, I really like the colour of this. Uh, it's like a, a matte grey finish. I haven't seen this yet, so this is genuinely the first time I've seen it. Um, it does come in different colours. Just on the side of the box here, it does say grey, white or green. So you've got three colour choices. Uh, I will post some links below, so if you're thinking of one of the alternative colours, then you can go and have a look at pictures of those. Uh, but really, as I say, I'm really impressed. I think because most of the most of the air fryers on the market, because I'll be honest, there are a lot of air fryers on the market now, um, but I like the, the finish on this, but most of the air fryers I've seen before, uh, and I suppose that I've sold before or reviewed before, are like a black finish, like a glossy finish. Uh, but I just like the, the matte finish on this. So one other thing it does come with, which I've just got out of the box, is first of all the instructions. And if you're following me on YouTube for a while, I do mention it quite a lot. I'm not a huge fan of instructions. I normally like to try and figure things out for myself. So you've got quite a, quite a thick book for the user manual. I might refer to it in a moment, uh, but quite a lot of the time I like to put that to one side. Um, you have got a couple of other things. So first of all, you've got a quick start guide. Uh, this can be quite useful sometimes just to point you in the right direction. Uh, you'll see you have got something here called the V-Sync app setup. Uh, clearly being a smart air fryer, you have got the controllability to control it from your phone as well. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that set up in a minute just to see how well it works. But it just shows you it's got the QR code on the front and you can download it from the uh, from Google Play or the App Store, if you've got to, an Apple device. But just in here, I'll just quickly show you. So you'll have different recipes and it just gives you a, a quick guide as to how best to use the, the air fryer. Uh, you've got it in different languages as well. So just go back to the beginning. So really what it's doing is it's just giving you an overview of some of the rough times and I suppose if you're not too sure, if you haven't used an air fryer before, then it's quite a different way of cooking. Uh, you do tend to find that it's normally a lot quicker. So if you're only heating up a small area, as I say, this one is the 3.8 litre capacity model. Uh, and what you will find is if you're heating that area up compared to a normal oven, then it does heat up really quickly. Uh, also, the speed of cooking is normally a lot quicker as well. And one of the final things it comes with is this, it's just showing the warranty card. And just really to point out that it comes with a two year warranty. Uh, that's very good. I suppose the majority of air fryers within the price range that this is would be a one year warranty. So I'm really pleased to see that Kasori have, are offering a two year warranty. But by the look of it, it is quite important that you register it. Uh, and then once you've registered it, then if you should have any issues, which hopefully you shouldn't, but if you should, then at least it's fully registered and covered for you. So when it comes to using the air fryer, first of all, let's just take the transit tape off the side here. That's only put on just to make sure that nothing moves when it's arriving to your doorstep. So we've got the main tray in here. And really the idea is that the crisper plate will sit inside there. Just show you that. So that will sit inside quite nicely. Uh, that's really important to use. So I suppose if you're cooking things like fries or chicken 
or a lot of things that can be crispy in there. It's always recommended because what that can do is that can help with the circulation of the air. Uh, if you don't use that, then chances are you won't get quite as crispy texture on the food afterwards. Uh, all of this is washable, so you, this can be, I suppose, either hand washed or you can pop it in the dishwasher. Uh, personally, for things like this, I suppose I'd normally recommend just hand washing it. Uh, the only reason I have found with, not with this brand at all, not with Kasori, uh, but with other products of a similar nature, if you start to put something like this in the dishwasher, then because it's going to be washed at quite a high temperature, sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, you can find that it might start to discolour. And if that, if the colour of this starts to be different to the rest of the body, after a couple of years of use, it can start to look a little bit silly. So personally, I would always prefer to hand wash this. Uh, plus you'll find because it is a non-stick uh, texture inside, then you know, there's not really a lot to, to clean. I suppose once you've, uh, if you have got anything stuck on in the inside, I would always recommend just to pop it into soak, leave it for a little bit, then come back and finish washing it. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a smart air fryer, uh, which makes it quite a bit different from a lot of the other air fryers on the market. Uh, I will be completely honest, I'm not too sure if this is an advantage or disadvantage. Of, being, of having the smart functionality. Uh, I've tested quite a few other kitchen appliances over the years that have got smart functionality, things like washing machines, tumble dryers. Um, and for us selling the products in the showroom, I suppose a lot of customers don't really get the concept of smart appliances. Uh, but this is the first one for me. So I'm going to go in and I want to set it up using the, the smart functionality. So. I've already downloaded the VE Sync app onto my phone. Let me just get that and I'll show you. So this was, it was very easy to do. Uh, I just followed the, just scanned the QR code on the top. It downloaded within a moment or two. And once you've done that, then you just click add devices. So just on here, add device. And what it does is it starts to list a lot of the products that it is compatible with. And you will find with a lot of these apps, uh, as new products get added to the apps, then it will update through here. Uh, but just having a quick look, that there's a huge amount that you can connect to it. So the VE Sync app is not just for Kasori products, um, it covers other brands as well. Uh, I mean, it's got different um, types of products as well. So you've got outlet and switches, lighting, kitchen, air quality and health. Uh, so there's, there's a huge amount you can do with it. So if you have got several products within this range, then you can, I suppose, in theory, link them all together. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to find this product, so the Kasori Light. And what I'll do is I'm just going to click on that and it says allow location access. I'll do that while using the app. Uh, what I do need to do and I just realised this, I do need to plug it in. Clearly, I should have thought about that first of all. So let's get it plugged in, because how else is it going to find it? This is how prepared I am. Anyway, that's what makes it fun about doing these kind of videos. So, searching for devices, and it's found this one. Let me show you that at the top. So it found that. So add device, press and hold the power button for five seconds until the Wi-Fi indicator starts blinking. So just on the top here, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to change the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing on top. So now I've zoomed in just on the top here. Um, what I do is um, I'm just gonna finish setting this up because it's just getting to the, the part where I need to add the device. So I'm just gonna finish this and I'll show you the display on top here. So it's saying press and hold the power button for five seconds. So if we press and hold that for five seconds, it's beeped at me and found device. So you can see it's connecting to your device. And here we go. So just, just connect it up to my Wi-Fi network. I'm just gonna pop the password in here. So now it's done that. 
Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully there's not too much glare on it. Uh, what it's doing is it's asking if I want to select a room that I want to put it in. Uh, I suppose because a lot of the products are quite generic products that can go around the house uh, within the VE Sync app, then I don't blame them for doing this. Uh, but clearly I think for me, okay, I know I'm out in the conservatory at the moment, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to the kitchen. Uh, well, let's assign a new room actually. So kitchen and give the device name. Let's call it uh, Fryer. So you can call it different names if you want to. So if you wanted to give it a, a unique name, then you can do. Icon, I'm going to keep the icon the same. So device is all set. Go ahead and dry it out. Excellent. Uh, so what you have got through this, let's just have a, have a quick look. So you've actually got different recipe ideas. You can actually so monitor your meal's progress, make adjustments and receive notifications from anywhere with your smartphone. Exclusive recipe library. So hands-free cooking and done. So you have got on here also uh, things like Google Assistant and you can set up Alexa as well. I'll be honest, I, because I don't use that really at home now. Uh, I'm, although you can set it up with the Google Assistant, I'm not going to do that at the moment, uh, but you have got the ability to set it up with that if you decide to. Uh, but just quickly, I'll show you some of the recipes, recipe ideas that you've got. Uh, there, there is a huge amount on here, so just having a, a, a quick look. Uh, these are all, I suppose, dedicated to air fryer type of recipes. So you've got different, so what we got? Appetizers, breakfast ideas, entrees, you've got sides. Uh, the, there is literally, the, there's so much on here that you can choose. So I'll just quickly show you on the top here. Uh, let's first of all take this off. This is just a protective covering. I suppose all that's doing, that's just giving you some information. So it's just saying, saying that clearly it will get hot. This is a cooking product. So it should be a no brainer that the appliance will get hot. But I suppose they just have to put a warning on there. Uh, don't fill it with oil. Uh, it's not a deep fat fryer. Then you don't need to put a huge amount of oil in. Um, I have read some of the, I suppose, tips on using these and it is, you can, if you want to crisp things up, then you can put a sm very, very small amount of oil in, but you don't need a lot. Uh, also, when it comes to the, the crisper plate, uh, so the crisper plate may fall out when turning the basket over. Anyway, that's just some of the information about the FR itself. Uh, so, but as a, a quick glance on the front here, this is where you switch the unit on and you can actually select what you want to cook in here. Um, I'm gonna try something in, in a moment, uh, but basically the way it works is that, to keep it simple, you can change the temperature just on the left-hand side here. So let's have a look. So as, as standard, let's see how far it goes down. So 75 degrees is where it goes down to, so that's the minimum temperature. And as you press it, it goes up in five degree increments. And I like that. I like that it's five, not 10 degrees. I have seen one or two others on the market where it goes up in 10 degree increments. And sometimes you don't want it in 10 degree increments, but it goes up to 230 degrees. So that's the hottest it will go. And then not, if you just want to put something in, then you would just select the temperature first of all, and then you select the time that you want it to be in there for. So if you want it to be in there for 20 minutes, then that's what you would select. And then once you've done that, then you just press start and then it will start to heat up itself. So apart from the manual selection, you have got the option to select different ways of cooking. So I suppose depending on what you wanted to cook, then you've got five different options along the top here. So you've got chicken, fries, bacon, steak or veggies. Uh, and what that will do is it will cook in a slightly different way. And also, as you can see, it's pre-selected different temperatures and also the time that it's going to cook for. And as you can see, if you select the bacon, 
that has pre-selected it 100, 160 degrees for only eight minutes. Now, I must admit, when you're cooking bacon, it does normally take a bit longer than eight minutes. Um, the other option, so you have got the clearly the option on the top here, you've got the shake option on there, and what that will do, that will give you a reminder to move things around in there. So if you're cooking things like the fries, then that will actually remind you to shake the fries partway through the, the air frying process. Uh, you, clearly you don't have to have that on if you don't want to. I suppose for things like bacon, you will want to turn it. So I think that's a really good option. You have got the option for keep warm. So that's once it's finished, then it will try to keep the food warm at the end. Personally, I always like to think that once it's finished cooking, I'll go and take it out and eat it straight away. But sometimes it might not be possible. And the other thing to consider is if you are going to use the app, so if you're going to use the app that's on your phone, then the keep warm function could be a really good option to use. Uh, and what I say is that if you've put the food in and if you've gone out and if you've started the cooking process while you're out, if you're late back, then you can enable the keep warm function just to keep everything warm for you so it's not spoiled. As you can see, while I was just talking, it has turned off. Clearly that's a built-in power save device. And personally, I think that's a really good idea because if I'd walked off and just left it, then I don't really want that on all the time. To get that back on, all you do is you just press the on and off button on the left-hand side there. Uh, you've also got the preheat option. So that's just a, a four minute heat up and that will get it up, up to temperature very quickly. You'll find the preheat on an air fryer like this will be way, way quicker than preheating your main oven. Clearly at 3.8 litre capacity, it is a much smaller space to heat up. So I for a lot of people, when you come to set the time or the temperature and start the program for the air fryer, once you've loaded the food in, you'll do it pretty much from the top. Uh, but I have mentioned several times about the app and how I suppose easy it is to use. So I'll just show you this because I'm gonna try this. I do fancy giving this a go. Hopefully you can see it. I hope I've not got too much screen reflection. Um, but basically what this is showing you is that you've first of all got the manual selection. Uh, and then as you go along the top, you've got the different options along the top there. Uh, and if you want to, you can change the time or you can change the temperature. That's really, really easy. I'm, I'm very impressed with how simple this is to use. Um, but at the moment, I've actually got a couple of rushes of bacon that need eating. It's middle of the day, it's about lunchtime for me. So I'm actually going to go and grab a couple of rushes of bacon, pop them into the air fryer, and I'm actually gonna start cooking through the app. I'm not gonna to touch the top at all, just to see how this works. So I'm just gonna pop a couple of rushes of bacon in here, just show you that. Uh, the only thing I have done, and I did forget to mention first, I'd always recommend just giving this a quick wash out first. Uh, I know it might be clean, but personally, I always, if I'm going to put food into something, then I always prefer just to give it a, a quick rinse out first. So I was just giving it a soapy wash, uh, make sure it's completely dry. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that in there. Now, I must admit, I'm always partial to a cheeky bacon sandwich, especially on a Thursday afternoon when there's no one else in the house. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this. So I haven't tried this, so I do hope it works. Select bacon. Now I'm just gonna go with the recommendation on this. So I'm going to let it cook at the preset of 160 degrees, eight minutes. Uh, are we gonna have the shake reminder? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that off for now. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press cook now. Now you heard it just beep, uh, what it is saying, make sure the food has been put in, then press the start pause button on the device to start cooking. Uh, it is saying, wait for a few seconds please, app will automatically jump to page after you press the button on the device. So that's, okay. So I've had to select it on the app and then you have to go and press the start button on the FR itself. Anyway, that's showing me that I've got eight minutes remaining. Uh, so it knows the time at the moment, and that's telling me that it's gonna be ready at 10 to two. So you can see that I started it at 13.41. 
that's the time at the moment and that's just telling me the, the progress on it so in theory what I could do is I could go off and I could go and do something I don't know if you can hear that dog barking in the background that's quite frustrating I could go and tell the dog to be quiet anyway uh, <laughs> distract me a little bit um, but yeah really what that's doing is that's telling me the time that's remaining on the program so I'm just going to leave it leave it to cook I'm not going to touch it at all uh, so I'm just going to see how well it will cook in the eight minutes. So the air fryer is finished now. It did just beep at me. Um, so I haven't had a look in here yet. I'm just going to see, I'm going to show you after eight minutes what it's like. Now that is okay. I'd say that is cooked. Personally, I like it cooked a little bit more. I do like quite crispy bacon. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that in. So I'm going to put it in again. And I'm going to do the similar program. I'll do it at the same temperature. I'm not going to do it as long. Clearly the, uh, the air fryer is already, I suppose, heated up. I know it will have lost a little bit of the heat by me taking the, the tray out. Right, so I just selected the same program. I'll put it on for half the time. So I only put it on for four minutes this time. Uh, so again, I've not had a look inside. I just want to see how well the bacon has cooked. Now for me now, that's uh, rather tipping it up, that, little bad boy it looks pretty much perfect for me now hopefully you can see let's try and tip it that way because I've used the uh, the plate at the bottom here then what it's doing is any of the fat has dripped off and it's all underneath that so it's a much much healthier way of cooking so any of the fat that was I suppose has come off the bacon when it was cooking has dripped through and I suppose what I'd recommend is while I go and get the, the bread ready to eat my bacon sandwich, I just really move that round, just twist it round a bit, and I just pop it back in there, and hopefully any of the excess fat will drip through as well. So I've just polished off that bacon sandwich, that went down really well. Uh, plus, I do find when you cook something like bacon in the air fryer, uh, especially using the, the little tray at the bottom, because it took away a lot of the fat and the grease from the bacon, it just tasted so much nicer. Uh, but overall impression of this, I'm actually really impressed. Uh, I know it does say on the, or in the instructions that it does get hot on the front. I did find, uh, even once it had finished cooking, when it was at the maximum temperature, that it wasn't really that hot. I think because of the nature of it, because it's a plastic finish, then if it was a metal finish, it could get a lot hotter. So that's something I was really impressed with. Overall, things like the app on my phone. Uh, I have read some of the reviews and I must admit, I don't really agree with them. Uh, they're saying that the app wasn't that good, uh, wasn't that intuitive, but I found it was really good, uh, really easy to use. As you saw, I cooked some of the bacon uh, and using the app, using my phone. Uh, but overall, I think what I'm going to do is, over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna try sort of different recipes, different things cooking in it, because air fryers at the moment are quite big. Uh, well, they're huge at the moment, uh, electricity prices, especially in the UK, are going through the roof and people are realising that using certain other devices, especially in the kitchen, to cook, uh, there are much more efficient ways of cooking. Rather than just putting your oven on, then using something like an air fryer is, it can be such a more cost-effective way of cooking. I suppose the main reason is it's only heating up a very small area. Um, especially if you're going to cook things like chips, then it's a lot quicker as well and you still get the crispy nature of the, uh, the chips as well. If you are thinking of buying one of these models, I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Kasuri 3.8 litre air fryer. Now, I must admit, I've really enjoyed making this. I always enjoy making a video, especially when there's a, a little treat for me part way through where I've eaten a bacon sandwich. Clearly, I've got one here at the moment. So if you've got any questions on it, if it's something I've not quite covered, then just pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Also, if you have got one of these, then let me know what you think about it, because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.